Alright, hello guys, how's it going in today's video? We have to once again take a look at Tropical Storm Elsa. It has downgraded from a hurricane to a tropical storm, but it won't make too much of a difference as far as impacts are concerned. <laughs> For today's comment of the day, I want to know what do you think is the maximum amount of rainfall that anywhere in the United States will end up seeing from Tropical Storm Elsa? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video and first things first, we're taking a look here at our satellite imagery for Tropical Storm Elsa. And as you can see, we have a lot of taller clouds in there indicated by the black and white colors in there. There's also some pink showing up there on the very northern end. These are some taller clouds. The reason this one is really weakening is we're having a lot of land interaction. First off with Haiti down there, you can hardly see it, but it's on the very right, kind of like top right corner of your screen there. You can see Cuba to the north, uh, or, or I guess on top left. I always want to say like, it, I guess it is to the north, but it is the top left side of the screen. Jamaica there is kind of towards the middle. I hate how hard it is to see these uh, borders here, but you can kind of make them out if you... Uh, look very 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 closely but here's the low pressure location just in case you missed it that low pressure is located right in between cuba haiti and jamaica there's going to be a lot of land interaction going on today and we're going to have to just see what intensity we still have this storm at by the time it reaches uh the water again after hitting all of these areas uh on land basically cuba especially is going to be you know pretty detrimental we're going to see this storm bring many impacts to the land that it's interacting with but also the land is going to have a lot of impacts on this storm so it's kind of a mutual relationship there between the tropical storm and also the land being impacted all right now here is our cone forecast here from the national hurricane center and as you can see it is not expected to regain intensity to a hurricane we have a tropical storm and it's expected to go straight through Cuba, head north, and then likely hit the west coast of Florida, maybe even the middle of Florida, I think is possible, uh, kind of near the Everglades or so. Also, the Florida Keys are going to be directly impacted by this storm, likely as a moderate to high-end tropical storm, so that will bring impacts as well. We do have tropical storm watch up for those yellow regions, including the Florida Keys. We have tropical storm warnings up there for the blue regions, so that's another thing as well. As you can see, this storm is expected to go through Florida, possibly offshore of the Carolinas, and then even offshore of the Northeast. If not, it'll be inland, which would also bring its own types of impact. So regardless, we are taking a look at an impactful situation here, no matter how you write it up, and I do expect a lot of rainfall, a lot of windiness. And if it is offshore of the East Coast, I do expect it to possibly intensify a little bit. So we'll have to take a look at that possibility as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on. And we're going to take a look at the probability of tropical depression and probability of tropical storm according to the European model. Now, first off, here is the probability of tropical depression. And as you can see, we have a 90 to 100 percent chance there over the next three days. That's going to take us all the way to Wednesday, July 7th. That should be obvious. Probability of tropical storm over the next three days is only a 10 to 20 percent chance. I think that's a little low considering we have a strong tropical storm currently in the Atlantic. Uh, but that's just uh, kind of an example of the weird things this model does. I've mentioned that a couple of times now, but this model is an odd one and it does tend to do some weird things. We have many models that are like that, but this one is like that in its own way. And then sometimes it's strikingly accurate as well. So that's why I continue to use it because a lot of you are probably wondering like, okay, if it's so bad and so weird, why do we even use it? Well, you know, 50% of the time it is, it is more accurate than anything else in my opinion. And then 50% of the time it does some wacky stuff. The good thing is you can usually recognize when it's doing something weird or if it's actually onto something. So here is the probability of tropical depression for the days three through six. That's going to be Wednesday, July 7th through Saturday, July 10th. And as you can see, we have a, what, what is that? That is a 60 to 70% chance offshore of North Carolina, Virginia, and the Delmarva there. So there is expected to be a, a tropical system of some sort offshore of the East Coast, according to this European model. And even as we take a look at the probability of tropical storm, as you can see, for that same time frame, we have a 30 to 40% chance of a tropical storm offshore of the East Coast. So this one could totally redevelop into a tropical storm. If it doesn't already maintain its tropical storm status, it could just regain that intensity. So that is definitely a possibility at this point. Now, let's go ahead and start taking a look at some of those spaghetti models. And this is our GFS ensemble model first off. And as you can see, it is expected to cross over Cuba 
then potentially hit the Florida Panhandle over there, and then this one expects it to stay pretty much onshore of the eastern seaboard. Now, our European ensemble model here expects this one to hit basically the middle of Florida, go offshore of the east coast, uh, and stay offshore of the east coast, intensifying into a pretty strong storm offshore of the Carolinas, the northeast, all of it, and even hit Atlantic Canada as a pretty strong storm as well. That would be the most impactful solution because it's not going to weaken by any means with this solution, but it also is going to bring those impacts on shore. So that's like a deadly combo right there that we're going to want to look out for, for sure, uh, with this type of a storm that could just track up the East Coast and stay over water. That is definitely not what we want to see happening with this storm moving forward. We're going to know probably by tomorrow what's going to happen for sure. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the CMC uh, models, spaghetti model guidance, and then the individual models as well. We'll even take a look at the intensity guidance, and then we're going to start talking about impacts in just a moment. Now, here's the Canadian ensemble model spaghetti model guidance, and as you can see, this one is even further east than the European model. This one has the middle of Florida, or maybe even the east coast getting hit the worst, and then also the eastern seaboard, just like the European model, which again would be a very impactful solution because all those different areas along the east coast would be impacted by a stronger storm as opposed to one that was inland that would significantly weaken into just kind of a typical low pressure center. So that is obviously a huge difference. The individual models as well are not as far west as the GEFS model. Uh, and really they have a lot of these hitting very close to maybe Tampa and then heading offshore of the east coast. Uh, bringing some more moderate to major impacts there as well. Now here is our tropical storm model intensity guidance. And as you can see, we're at a stronger tropical storm. This one is generally going to weaken over time. Uh, and likely in about hour 72, it will be weakened below tropical storm status. That is because it will be moving on to the United States. There's not a single model that has this one weakening below tropical storm status before hitting the United States. So that is an interesting thing to note. It is possible, obviously, because there wasn't very many models calling for this one to be a hurricane either, and that did happen. So sometimes unexpected things happen. I'm also watching for maybe some rebounding in this intensity later on, because uh, I do see some of these going more upward there towards the very right side of it, and that's likely as it's re-entering the Atlantic, according to some of these. Most likely arrival time of tropical storm force winds, and I encourage you to try to find your area on here, because this is obviously important the most likely arrival time of tropical storm force winds, but the very southern regions of Florida, even the Florida Keys and Miami, it'd be about Monday at about 8 p.m. Uh, Tuesday, 8 a.m., it'll have moved a little bit further north. Tuesday, 8 p.m., that'll be mostly Tampa Bay, Orlando area, and then Wednesday, 8 a.m. might be about Jacksonville or so. Uh, and then Wednesday, 8 p.m., that'll be reaching South Carolina. Thursday, 8 a.m., it'll be reaching Virginia and North Carolina. It'll be, you know, possibly offshore, possibly onshore type of deal. Now here's the peak storm surge forecast graphic and we do expect one to two feet of storm surge there for the Florida Keys. That's also notable obviously. The total rainfall if you're in the light green you're at about one to two inches. If you're in the dark green two to four inches and if you're in the yellow four to six inches of rainfall. So that includes the west coast of Florida there. We will update you obviously on that if there is any updates to that. Greatest flash flood risk over the next three days. We have a marginal risk, which is a 5% chance there in the green, and then a slight risk there in the yellow, uh, and that's where we expect a little bit more of an elevated chance of that flooding, obviously. So there will be a flooding risk with this one, certainly, uh, as this will be a tropical system and likely bring a lot of rainfall on shore, obviously. Now for today's confidence tab, we're at a five out of six, just like yesterday. There's less questions than answers at this point, so that is good news because it was not always that way. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, uh, what do you think is gonna happen with this one now at this point? Do you think it's gonna hit you know, a certain state? What intensity do you think it'll be at at that point? And James Marsh said, I believe Elsa will hit Florida as a very strong tropical storm, and I think it will hit Florida as a higher end tropical storm as well, so I certainly do agree with you there. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Larry the Pan, and Donna Carnes, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Cat Bite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flagos, Gary's, John Colisi, Dwight Phelan, and Steven Crenenthal. If you would like to be a part of this exciting Patreon page and this exciting end screen today, you can do so by joining our very awesome Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Hair Frumps One and Cat Bite as well. 
Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button and leave, leave a comment down below because that helps the algorithm out so much. And also be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.